One of the most curious things about dreams is how they play everything back to us, as if life is really just our mirror, a reflection of our inner world. For example, dreaming of a house can embody our inner paradigm, where an unknown room in a familiar home can represent how we explore new potential. We examine our need for broader fulfillment in a kitchen setting, and we explore repressed ideas and dreams of the basement. And the bathroom is where we come clean or become truthful with ourselves. Other people also portray qualities we are exploring. If we consider the adjective we'd use to describe the people who appear in our dreams, we can understand the side of us that's being examined or undergoing transformation. The dreamy mind sees life as its mirror. It uses symbols as a way to understand itself. Ideas flow through the mind, similar to how digestion works. Self-defeating ideas are eliminated, while ideas that support our growth nourish us and make us stronger. Whether in dreams or in daily life, some core part of us is in a perpetual state of flux and change. While dreaming returns us to wonder, we tend to get stuck in routine thinking during the day. We are more than our mind. We are a witness and a participant in a larger field. The field has the potential to change our orbit of focus. Just as gravity is the weight of a planet pulling on the fabric of space, the energy we hold and protect can trap us in repetitive patterns. Ideas are energy, and in the same way the excited energy of warmer waters can generate storms and hurricanes, a repressed idea in the field that seeks balance is going to excite its own release, and it becomes the fodder of our dreams. But we see how what happens in the field is both the cause and the effect in simultaneous action. The way the body cares for itself with little or no effort on our part reveals how life is never working against us. It's been committed to our success since the day we were born. Dreams are the metaphorical language of how we are feeling. By day, we're also observing life in terms of what it means to us or how we feel. We see clearly how the mind is creating our dreams, but fail to recognize how the mind is also creating our experiences. In fact, we can have a sense of how our mind influences what we see. If we're in a good mood, life flows more easily. When we are frustrated, obstacles appear everywhere. The struggle becomes energy in a field that will return to balance. And science shows us this observer-based reality, where we influence what we attempt to measure. Most people interpret the field as this or that, good or bad, right or wrong, as if they have nothing to do with what's unfolding around them. Life can be anything we want it to be. The field transcends time and space, and it's more of like a mathematical equation, like numbers or functions. It exists independent from the mind or language. It's something we discover, not something we invent, and it was always there. We can measure particles as points in space within the field, but seem unable to capture the wave-like connectivity of it. Blemishes we place on perception come from judgment. We tarnish the mystery through classifications of good and bad, blotting out life's potential so that we only see what we know. Rather than awaken into the mystery, we lick our wounds in the comfort of a familiar existence. This is why emptiness is said to be the source of all being. When we awaken into this moment of wonder, simply being without the idea of becoming anything, when we have no sense of separation from anything around us, our bindings are loosened and we are set free. And we call this field the void, but the void is where potential blossoms. It's that place where miracles emerge because we're open to joyful discovery. Like dreaming, in how logic and our sense of self-consciousness abate, we can still the mind and let it go. We can become a part of a greater mind. We can return to our place of birth and flow into the field. And we can make the mind like a mirror. It conducts nothing and anticipates nothing. It responds to what it sees but doesn't retain it. Experience flows in and out but there is nothing to separate us from the field and the potential it holds for us. And the mind that is empty 
resonates most completely with the field. Without looking out the window, we can see the entire universe. 